Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game. Uh, this one was played in 1976 in Belize and it is uh, truly a, a remarkable attacking masterpiece with the black pieces by none other than the 13 year old Garry Kasparov. He's playing against Armenian Grandmaster Sambat Laputian uh, even though he was 19 years old at the time and he was not a Grandmaster. I just don't have a, an earlier photo of him uh, so we're using this one and it's really really a spectacular attack. I'm, uh, we're we're going to discuss what happens when we, we reach that point but it's uh i mean you, you will really enjoy this game i know about it for for quite a long time but i've just never covered it so i thought you might um, uh, enjoy it so laputian has the white pieces and he opens with d4 uh, we have knight to f6 by kasparov c4 g6 knight to c3 and now bishop to g7 kasparov goes for his king's indian defense we have pawn to e4 and d6 going for standard stuff we have pawn to f3 the semish variation against the king's indian and now knight to c6 with bishop to e3 and pawn to a6 so this is very standard stuff played even uh, today at the absolute top level queen to d2 and now we have rook to b8 by kasparov uh, castles is a bit more uh, frequent here but uh, okay R rook to b8 uh, rook to uh, sorry rook to b1 uh, preparing pawn to b4 and now kasparov castles we have pawn to b4 grabbing more space here on the queen side and now striking in the center pawn to e5 as you should the white king is still in the center of the board so pawn to d5 knight to d4 and now knight g to e2 aimed at uh, the, the knight on d4 so c5 by gary uh, d captures on c6 en passant b captures on c6 and now knight captures on d4 we have e captures on d4 bishop captures on d4 and now rook to e8 uh, uh, getting another uh, attacker into the game now the rook nicely occupies the e file and here uh, kasparov is down a pawn and he uh, he, he really wants to attack that white king but white just plays bishop to e2 and is now ready to castle so what would you play here it's a it's a very interesting uh, position because only one move Kasparov can play that uh, pretty much gives an equal position otherwise white will just be better if white castles white is up a pawn white has very nice central control white has a beautiful bishop on d4 white has already advanced pawns on the queen side so you have to do something and obviously that's why a uh, 13 year old Kasparov sacrificed a to get this position what do you think he had in mind uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find a way to uh, maybe start an attack against the white king while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not allowing that uh, king to, to, to run away. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to c5. That's how you do it. Uh, now white uh, is forced to react to this because the bishop on d4 is hanging. I will just mention that this position was also reached. Now remember, this is played in 1976, but it was also reached in a game in 1997 in Denmark. And uh, here black just played knight to h5 and lost the game terribly little did he know that he was actually uh in a position that that kasparov brilliantly won uh in 1976 uh but okay pawn to c5 this is what kasparov played so congratulations to everyone who found this now you keep the white king in the center at least for one more move because white has to react to this and now b captures on c5 that this is the only good way to play this uh so what did you achieve by by sacrificing the pawn here well you've opened up the b file for your rook but now comes the real shocker of the game and that is knight captures on e4 again uh, not allowing white to castle uh, as the queen is hanging so you have to react to this so f captures on e4 this is the only good way to accept the sacrifice and now kasparov plays queen to h4 with check and now pawn to g3 now interestingly pawn to g3 is the move that um, allows kasparov to make something out of this attack if if uh, white really wanted to survive white would have to play bishop to f2 and then we just trade everything bishop captures on c3 bishop captures on h4 rook captures on b1 with check king to f2 and now of course you have to pick up the queen bishop captures on d2 rook captures on b1 and d captures on c5 and you can see that it's uh, equal material 
Uh, of course, that does not mean it's uh, you know it's an easy game. Your st- your opponent is still uh, Kasparov, thirteen year old Kasparov, but still Kasparov. And you have four pawn islands. Kasparov has three pawn islands. So uh, you know it, it still it, it would be very very hard to play this. Uh, but okay, in the game G three was played, and now for the second time in this video, pause the video and find the winning idea for Kasparov while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, brilliant line. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook captures on b1 with check. And now the problem is, of course, uh, the rook cannot be captured. If knight captures on b1, then just queen captures on e4. And now look at this. The rook is hanging, the knight is hanging, the bishop is hanging. Now the queen and bishop are attacking it. And there's just no good way to play this. If you move the rook, even bishop captures on d4 can be played. Still the knight is hanging. And now if you defend the knight d captures on c5 how are you surviving with your king on e1 and there's this constant pressure of queen captures on e2 checkmate if the white queen moves you still have the bishop pair bishop the g4 is coming it's uh i mean th this is a dream position so instead after rook captures on b1 king to f2 is played as now kasparov's queen on h4 is still hanging and now uh, there is only one move that uh, Kasparov can play that wins the game for him. And this is the one that he basically had to see when he uh, played that uh, pawn to c5 move uh, in order for all of this to work. Because without that move, you, you just have nothing. And that move is rook to b2. That's the good stuff. And now what do you, what do you play? Uh, if you capture the rook, uh, you, you lose terribly. Just bishop captures on d4. This comes with check. And after king to e1, uh, bishop captures on c3, queen captures and queen captures on e4. Now threatens checkmate and also the rook on h1 is hanging. Uh, so there is uh, n nothing to play here. So after rook to b2, uh, all right, uh, Laputian said, let's trade queens. G captures on h4. Okay, rook captures on d2, and now bishop captures on g7. He trades everything off, king captures on g7, and now king to e3, attacking Kasparov's rook, rook to c2, and even king to d3. And this is where Kasparov has to be very, very careful. If he moves the rook to b2, tries to save uh, save material, then uh, capturing on d6 with the pawn uh, will give white two connected pass pawns. Also, there's the e pawn, so this would be very, very hard for uh, for, for black to stop. However, after king to d3, Kasparov just plays rook captures on c3. Uh, doesn't shy away from uh, sacrificing even more material this game. King captures on c3 and now d captures on c5. And now you have this position where uh, the material is now equal. If you remember, Kasparov sacrificed the first a pawn for the attack, then the knight, and then he just gave up the exchange here. Uh, but white now has four pawn islands. Kasparov has three pawn islands and uh, white also has a doubled eight pawn so black is definitely better here uh, how will Kasparov play this well first we have bishop to d3 by Laputian defending the e4 pawn now bishop to b7 goes after the e4 pawn rook to e1 defending and now we have rook to e5 uh, we have uh, pawn to a4 and now pawn to f5. Now, of course, you cannot capture because the rook on e1 would hang. So rook to b1 goes after the bishop and now bishop captures on e4. We have rook to b6, uh, putting pressure on the a6 pawn. But now uh, Kasparov just starts advancing his past pawn. So pawn to f4, rook captures on a6 and pawn to f3. We have bishop to f1, uh, but now bishop to f5. We have rook to a7 with check. Check, king to h6 and now king to d2. Now Laputian has to do something to stop that past f pawn. Pawn to f2 and now bishop to e2. Uh, but now bishop to g4. Kasparov offers a bishop uh, for the promotion of his uh, past pawn. Bishop to d3 and now rook to e1. Now the f1 square is guarded by the rook. So f1 queen is coming. If you don't do anything about it. So rook to f7 guarding the f1 square. And now comes bishop to f5. Only winning move. Uh, but not that difficult to spot. Now the rook no longer guards the f1 square. And you are ready to promote your pawn. So here a5. The a pawn, uh, the a -pawn starts marching forward. Bishop captures on d3. This is even better. Uh, because if you just uh, bring your queen into the game, okay, bishop captures, rook captures, but you still have the rook, you still have to deal with the pass pawn, black would still be winning, uh, but this is just much cleaner. Kasparov plays bishop captures on d3, 
rook captures an f2 as now the threat is just f2 f1 queen uh, so rook captures an f2 and now it seems like Liputian found a way to stay in the game because Kasparov's rook is hanging and also his bishop is hanging but even though uh, there's only one move that again wins the game for Kasparov it's not a difficult one to spot rook to f1 and he was in this position on move 38 that Sambat Liputian resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here now uh, okay uh, whatever you do uh, you, you're not going to be equalizing in material you can capture on f1 but then just bishop captures and then if pawn to a6 you are in time to stop uh, that pawn bishop captures on c4 a7 bishop to d5 guards the a8 square and that's it you will not be promoting that pawn so really a, a remarkable attacking game by by 13 year old gary kasparov who uh, i mean look at this he sacrificed a pawn bishop to e2 was played and then he he spots it i mean look at this combo c5 to open up the b file then knight captures an e4 to open up the queen's diagonal and just you know uh, uh set the entire board on fire queen to h4 check now okay if bishop to f2 the game continues but g3 a suboptimal move was played and then comes everything rook captures on b1 king f2 and now rook to b2 which uh, kasparov absolutely had to see uh, when he played that pawn to c5 move because if he didn't uh well there's just no nothing for him here your queen is hanging and, and your rook is hanging you you have to you have to see this so really really uh, a wonderful one uh, i don't know uh, how it took me so long to cover this game but uh, you know there, there are so many games in in the uh, world that have been played so you know there are many many more great games that we still have to cover so keep suggesting them use hashtag suggestion you can send me an email you can send me a message on twitter on any uh, you know pretty much social platform and i will uh, l l look into it uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're a King's Indian player and you didn't know about this game, then I'm sure your day was vastly improved. But even if you're not, maybe you will consider uh, picking it up or, or maybe even just, you know, uh, trying it in, in some of your uh, online games. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Richard Schwartz, Jonathan Bradley, Christopher Norris, uh, Mokosoft, and uh, Michael Arboy for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continue to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.